With your CIG TV news update, community news and weather forecast, I'm Jay Earhart. Thanks for joining us. The Cayman Islands continues to engage politicians across the political spectrum in the United Kingdom. At this year's Conservative Party conference, the Cayman Islands presence included a stand in the exhibition hall, as well as participation in a panel discussion about Global Britain. The Ministry of International Trade and the Cayman Islands government took part in a partnership event with The Spectator magazine. During the last few days, we've had the opportunity to interact uh, with a lot of people, kind of giving them a little bit of background in regards to the Cayman Islands, just reminding them that we are a British overseas territory and uh, that we are here to give them a little bit of education as to who we are, what we are, where we are, um, what we're doing, what we've been successful at in terms of being a British overseas territory, and um, just kind of having a lot of misperceptions clarified and hopefully um, confirmed that not all that they hear or see may be true. So we're here to, to step up our game in terms of a global footprint and obviously uh, sharing that with the rest of the world. The Cayman booth featured promotional materials and information from the Department of Tourism and Cayman Finance. Visitors to the stand were given information and advice about the Cayman Islands, including history, culture, and tourism, with a focus on the Cayman Islands' close ties to Britain. Members of the Cayman Islands All-Party Parliamentary Group, including Chairman Sir Graham Brady MP, also visited the stand to show their support. Chief Justice the Honorable Anthony Smelly hosted a special session of the courts yesterday to honor departing Grand Court Justice Ingrid Mangatal. Justice Mangatal is leaving office on October 31st after serving for nearly five years in the Cayman Islands. She came to the islands following a distinguished legal and judicial career in Jamaica. At the special session, her fellow judges and other members of the court's community praised her contributions during her time here. Back in January 2015, much to Cayman's gain and at Jamaica's expense, Mangatel J left Jamaica to join us. She did so despite having been recommended for a permanent appointment to the bench of the Jamaica Court of Appeal, for having already sat in an acting capacity on that esteemed court. Of course, Mangatel J was no stranger to our legal community, as she had already admirably served in the Cayman Islands as an acting judge. No doubt the quality of her work shown by her during those times, coupled with her extensive and diverse legal expertise and experience gained at the commercial private bar in Jamaica, from her time as Senior Assistant Attorney General in Jamaica, and from her time on the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal in Jamaica, made her a great fit and addition. Well, with less than two weeks left in this year's Pirates Week song competition, we spoke to the festival's Executive Director, Melanie McField, about the excitement behind one of the most anticipated events on the annual Pirates Week schedule. The Pirates Week Festival office is excited to announce the return of the national song competition to the Pirates Week calendar after a strong comeback last year with over a dozen entrants. The event was suspended from the calendar for several years and thanks to the Cayman Music and Entertainment Association they pushed for the return of this event, which builds upon local talents and creates a great balance between the popular North American music genres and regional genres. The event offers 10,000 in cash prizes, 5,000 for first, 3,000 for second, and 2,000 for third. Um, we're grateful to the Ministry of Culture and the Tourism Attraction Board, as well as the Cayman Music and Entertainment Association for providing this sponsorship. The deadline for entry for the Pirate Suite National Song Competition is Friday, October 18th. The registration fee of $50 per entry should be submitted directly to the Pirate Suite office, of course, with a completed application form. You can find all of the information you need about this event on our Pirates Week Festival dot com website or you can email us at events at piratesweekfestival.com or just give us a call 949-5078. Now for those stories making headlines from the Radio Cayman newsroom. On Thursday the National Gallery will host a retrospective featuring one of the Cayman Islands most prominent artists. 
This first comprehensive survey of the artist's career and life will feature 400 artworks brought together with sketchbooks, catalogs, archival material, and more. The exhibition will remain open through January. For more information, visit the gallery's website. Also making Radio Kimmy headlines, the Bahamas Real Estate Association have expressed their gratitude following a 10,000 CI dollar donation by the counterparts from the Cayman Islands Real Estate Brokers Association. The funds will be used to support the work of Housing Relief Committee. Today we share with you highlights from the Cayman Compass coverage of last weekend's Golden Apple Awards. Tonight we're here for the seventh Golden Apple Awards for excellence in teaching. to build up the characters of students and help them become ideal citizens. I'm completely overwhelmed and a little bit petrified standing up in front of you all of you. No offense, but you're a lot older than my usual target audience. Um, and so much around the school, they uh, show the confidence not only to get involved but in class to take risks. And uh, they show the resilience when met with challenge. And um, so for that reason, I want to thank my students as well, because it is for them that I do this. It's really an honor for me to be recommended, first of all. And there's somebody on there who thought that the simple things that I did as a teacher and principal uh, was deserving of this extraordinary award. I stand here receiving this award uh, on behalf, not just of myself, but of all the people who have helped me along the way, of all the individuals who have been there and the groups of people who have been there uh, with me. Can I do biology and animal? I'm emotional. <laughs> <clears throat> she said, well, at school you need, you need to get a B. But you got a D. She can. So she took him under her wing and he got a D at And tonight, my son is training to be an art teacher. If you're a grandparent, raise your hand. <laughs> if you're a dad, raise your hand. <laughs> if you're a mum, raise your hand. <laughs> On behalf of the parents, to all of the people, we teach and make a difference. Thank you. And you can go online to both Radio Cayman and the Cayman Compass for more daily community news headlines. Taking a look now at today's weather forecast for our area from the Cayman Islands National Weather Service. Isolated showers along with light southeasterly winds and slight seas will continue across the Cayman area as a weak ridge of high pressure system builds over the northwest Caribbean. Further east, a weak tropical wave over Jamaica will move south over our area on Wednesday morning, having little to no influence on our weather conditions. Radar images show isolated showers in and around the Cayman area moving northwest. The Monday forecast calls for partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers. Winds are from the southeast at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. We encourage you to go online to weather.gov.ky for the latest forecast which can also be found on their Facebook page and on their weather, weather radio dial, 107.9 FM. And don't forget, you can download the National Weather Service app, CINWS, 
to have the latest weather information right at your fingertips. And that's the latest from us here at CIG Television. To see what's on our programming schedule, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and click on the publication icon at the bottom of the page. If you missed today's news update, you can check out our Facebook and YouTube channels. I'm Jay Gerhardt. Thanks for joining us. Boating, fishing, and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities such as snorkeling and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two. These items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four, in addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five, also don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911, the RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710, and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all. I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the deadbolts are not able to move. If it is slightly open, then you can push the deadbolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be pried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway.
We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away.